everyone. It's really tremendous to be together in this way. Thank you so much for the zeal and expectation that's in the room. You know, uh, you read scriptures like, it was a joy for me to go to the house of the Lord. And just seeing you park in different places that you've never parked before and sit in different places that you've never sat before, I trust that you are sensing the joy of God in this. I do believe that God is speaking to us prophetically and that this is a whole new season for the church. I hadn't really seen that coming. It's, it's come afresh to me in the last maybe three or four days the reality of that, and I was a bit in tears uh, as those prophetic words were coming. So I have great expectation, actually, for today, and I'm so, so thankful to you for all being here and uh, for the discomfort that it is sitting in crazy places and parking in crazy places. I'd like to introduce Dave Holden. Um, many of you will know Dave and be friends with Dave and Liz. Some may or may not know him. But uh, one of the things that we're celebrating today is a leadership transition that is done in a New Testament biblical model. And I'll be highlighting a couple of other things later that we are celebrating on how this transition is happening. But you will notice that it has not happened by vote. And the power of Jesus leading his church is something that we really need to rediscover in the body of Christ. And one of the gifts that God has given to the church for equipping the saints and helping the church to hear God's voice is the gift of the apostle with a small a. It says here in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for works of ministry, for building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ. And some people have said, well, apostles are not for today. They ceased with the twelve. And what happens when you get that is you rob the church of a particular gift, much like if you ever rob the church of the gift of the prophet, or the gift of the evangelist, or the gift of the pastor, or the gift of the teacher. There's no doubt that the apostles who walked with Jesus were unique, apostles with a capital A. But if you haven't noticed, we have not reached the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, except for Mus. <laughs> Not even Mus. There is still a maturing of the body of Christ, an enhancing, a preparing for the bride of Christ. And to that end, apostles are for today. And even as we heard the word referring to Simon Pettit and his apostolic input into us and how as he died, that word absolutely came, that there will be mighty oaks rising up. And I absolutely believe that as today seeds fall to the ground, people hand over in that sense, die to what they have been doing and move into another thing. There will be newness for them and newness for all of us. I think about how Edward and Frida Berea have served so lovingly and faithfully over the years. Terry and Wendy Virgo, John Peepy, uh, Carl and Virginia Harrington, so many across the world. Steve and Deb Tibbet, who are going to be with us in a couple of weeks. PJ and Ash Smythe, as they planted this church and have prayed and cared over the years. And this morning, to have Dave and Liz with us is such a blessing. In fact, we've timed it with their trip. Every single year, they make sure that they have time with Claire and me together once a year. They make sure they have two days, three days with us, and they speak to us, they care for us, they ask us about our marriage, they speak to the teams that I'm serving, they check with our children from time to time. Sometimes our kids have stayed with them in the UK. This is relationship. This is the gifts of the body outworking in a context of love. It's not like we've got a secret ballot. 
We, we relate to one another. We talk, we listen, we hear God together, and we are particularly strengthened by the gift of the apostle that comes in from the outside with special gifting and ability to test, to pressure test, to judge, to see, and to help us move forward. So I'd like you in a moment just to give a round of applause to Dave and Liz as they stand, and then I'll pray for Dave as he preaches, and I'm going to trust God that he does something very special among us as that gift is unleashed. Would you take a sit, stand up, turn around. Great. Thanks, Dave. Coming up. Father, thank you so much that the scriptures say they will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Thank you that your kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I pray for your blessing on Dave as he preaches, as he shapes the very moment that you have brought us to. And we ask, Lord, for your purposes and your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Dave. Amen. Amen. Let's make sure this is on. Yes. It is on. Wonderful. Can you hear me at the back? Ex no. <laughs> you can. Great. Wonderful. It's just a joy and privilege for us to be with you on this very special occasion. Um, I plan to preach just for a little while. Why are you looking so good about that? <laughs> He's smiling and nodding. <laughs> Um, and the reason for that is we have gathered together today to spend time praying for significant elders that are being appointed into River of Life and others that are moving on. And I will make a few comments just now about transition. I want to speak about a time of transition. And to echo... Scott's words, those prophetic words that we've just had, I think sometimes words come and the significance of them doesn't really penetrate us, perhaps as they should, but those were very, very significant words. I wish the name Simon Pettit had not been mentioned because every time he is, I just get so emotionally affected. He was one of my closest friends. Lots of you wouldn't have known him, but that prophetic word about a mighty oak falling was just who he was and saplings will gather around. That word actually was brought by three different people at the same time from three different continents who had never ever met one another. And so the significance, and here we are 18 years later after he died and the saplings and the seeds and the growth continue to this very day, which is an amazing thing. I want to really, really commend you as a people and as a church for the way that this transition has taken place. It's been an unhurried journey. It's included you. I've had the joy of reading uh, uh, messages about these elders, for example, who are going to be appointed today. And there's a lot going on this morning. <laughs> some of us will get some of it. Some of us will get more of it. Some of us will get all of it. But this is such a significant day. Uh, I think some of us get really excited about these days more than others. And the reason for that is we understand the significance of what's going on, which goes way beyond this particular Sunday, the 12th of February. In fact, in years to come, there will be still new saplings, new seeds, new beginnings happening as a result of what we're doing today. We are going to be thanking God for those who have been elders in this church for many, many years who have loved and served and sacrificed and joyfully given themselves to you as a community. And now the time has come for them to lay that down when we present them to you in a few moments, I am expecting a thunderous applause of thanksgiving. I'm trusting that you in Harare know what a thunderous applause will look like as opposed to where I come in the UK. 
<laughs> I'm expecting something different because I'm not in the UK. Um, and it's a significant day for these guys because this is the wonderful news. It is not about them retiring. It's about them moving on. And it's about them moving on to new things. I'm so excited that definition is coming to the new things that these brothers and as couples and brothers and sisters will be doing in the future, defining those things. Elders are staying on as elders. And I wanted to say a comment on that was those who have been elders for some time and are staying on as elders, this is a significant moment for you as well because it's going to be a new kind of eldership. It's not going to be like the one, you can't have people move on and stay the same. And the encouragement to those who are staying as elders is that even for you, I think this is a new season, a dynamic moment where something is going to be birthed and something's going to become alive in you. And then we'll be introducing also the new elders, which is ever so much about the future of River of Life. Every time new eldership has been appointed, it's a new day. Uh, I came off eldership of a church in London that Liz and I planted 44 years ago. I came off eldership for the first time of 44 years in October last year. And the reason is because one generation is handing over to another generation. And we appointed new elders of another generation into that place. And I wasn't feeling for one moment that I was missing out on something, but absolutely rejoicing in watching this new generation take things way beyond where we have been in the past and actually run faster than us and do an amazing work into the future. I know that there's some of us have been a bit surprised that some of these new elders we're introducing are a bit young. Can I just say that being young is a relative term? depending on how old you are. <laughs> so if you look at the color of my hair, everybody is young. <laughs> but I want to comfort those of you who think, hang on a minute, these, some of these guys are a bit young, they're a bit inexperienced. Remember this, they are coming into an eldership of experienced elders. So their youth, which we're told not to look down on, by the way, just to mention that in Timothy, <laughs> but they're their combination with an established eldership is going to be a wonderful, wonderful thing to comfort all of us. And for them to bring all that they have got. The most exciting thing in any church is when there are two or maybe even three generations that are part of that community. The Bible says one generation shall speak to another, shall impart to another, shall remind another of the good things that God has done, stories. And you as a church have two generations. And if you know anything about relays, if the four by 100, you'll know there's that moment where the baton is handed on for the final part of the race. And... There's that moment in the box where the two generations, as it were, the two runners run together. That is probably the most significant part of the race. Uh, for those of us that support Great Britain in the 4x100, it is the most scariest moment of the entire race. Because the amount of times we've dropped the baton, you can't even count. And the, and the race is won or lost, actually, on that particular moment. If the guy goes too fast, or the guy lags behind, then you're disqualified. So we have two generations. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Encouraging one another, experience, youth, passion, all together in that one particular moment. And so we've come today to this moment of transition. Transition is good. Transition is essential. Everybody experiences transition of one kind or another. The question is, do you do it well or do you do it badly? And if you don't transition, do you know what happens? Everything starts to stagnate. Everything slows up. What happens when you don't transition to a new generation is you get increasingly nostalgic about the past. You end up looking backwards at those golden days of River of Life. We were there at the beginning. And rather than that, doing that, you forget about the future 
and the thousands of people who don't know Jesus that are going to come to know Jesus as a result of us becoming a two-generational church and looking into the future. So transition is absolutely vital for the health and for the mission of us as a church community. So just a few moments this morning to put this into Scripture and base it in the Word of God. I want you to imagine the Apostle Paul. It's around the year AD 65 to 67, sometime around there. And he's coming to the end of his life. And he knows he's run his race well. He says in Timothy... I have fought the good fight. I have run my race. He knows that he's about to stop. He knows he's coming to an end. And he's sitting there and he's writing maybe his final letter to Timothy. And he's handing over to Timothy as a representative of a whole new generation. And it's kind of like in one or two Timothy, those wonderful books, it's his final shot. It's his final message. It's kind of, if I can say anything to you right now, and I can't say anything again in the future, this is what I want to say to you. And this morning, I just want to say to these new elders, I'm preaching to the new elders of this church and to a new generation, that if there's something we want you to know, it would be this. It's kind of like if you go in a restaurant and you have a napkin and someone says to you, I want you to write a message on the napkin that fits on that napkin and pass it to somebody as your legacy, as the words that you think are so important. And a napkin's not very big, right? So you haven't got, it's not going to be a great big long diatribe or, or epistle. It's just going to be one or two sentences. And what you would write or can I ask you, what would you write? But what you would write, I'm guessing, would be of great significance. I don't think you'll be talking about going to the shops and don't forget to pick up the Marmite. <laughs> if any of you know what that is. Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. So I wouldn't be putting that on the napkin for the new generation. What would I write? What would I say of most significance? I've only got one. Or perhaps if you knew that these were your last sentences, you wouldn't major on minor insignificant things. You would say the vital things that you want that generation to know to carry on into the future. If it was your last sermon, I wonder what you would say. If you just knew, if I knew that this was my last sermon, and I knew that, it suddenly makes it very significant in terms of what we would then say. Let's turn to our Bibles in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 3. Paul says to Timothy, right at the end of his life, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3, I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors with a clear conscience as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. It's interesting, as I read this passage, I'm going to encourage you, try and guess what are these most significant things that he's saying. As I remember your tears, in verse 4, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, the faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. <laughs> Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus, who abolished death, 
and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel for which I am appointed as a preacher and as an apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I've believed and I am convinced that he's able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love and that are in Christ Jesus. For by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Paul is coming to the end of his life and he says this, I have been entrusted with certain things and now I'm entrusting those same things to you. Notice the word guard. I have guarded all my life certain things. I've not compromised. I've not given up. I've guarded them all my life. And now, Timothy, I want you to guard exactly the same things. I'm not going to be around. I want you to carry on. I think Timothy is listening and reading this letter with great attention. So there are four things in this passage that Paul has guarded that he says to Timothy, I want you to guard. And on behalf of the existing eldership of River of Life, to those of you who are just going to become elders, these are the four things from this scripture that I believe that this eldership wants you to guard. It's a different day, it's a new season, but there are certain things that do not change. Please would you carry these on into the future. Number one, Paul says to him to guard the gospel. We read it together in verse 8. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but share in the suffering for the, the power, uh, the gospel by the power of God who saved us and called us to his holy calling. He is greatly concerned that we do not compromise the gospel. All right. The gospel stays the same. It cannot change. It has power in it. Remember Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. The Apostle Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. And it's an amazing statement because the Apostle Paul, when he traveled around, he met all sorts of different people. He met Jews who understood the whole of the Old Testament. He, he went on to speak to Athenians in Athens who'd never heard of Jesus and worship idols and gods. And he would get alongside these people and he would debate with them. And he was an intelligent, brilliant man. And yet never once did he say, okay, just to, cl just to please you, Greeks, I'll just water down the message of the gospel. I'll just change a few little things so that it's more convenient for you to understand. And brothers and sisters, we live in a day where there are many parts of the church that just want to water down the message of the gospel. Don't do it. The moment you water down the gospel or just, just bring the edge of it, the offense of it down, you shortchange the people who could receive the power of the gospel to transform their lives. We may be living increasingly in a generation that doesn't believe in sin. So let's not talk about sin. Let's talk about your feelings and therapy and the need to have other things come into your life. I'm so sorry we've spoken about sin. I appreciate it's not a 21st century word, so let's change it. The moment you do that, you've lost the power of the gospel. The gospel is about the cross of Jesus Christ. The gospel is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The things that we absolutely believe in. And it doesn't matter how much the world changes its views and doesn't want you to say the things that you know you should say, you should not be ashamed. And the reason that Paul never watered down to Jews, to intellectuals, to the poor, was because he understood this. Everywhere I preach this gospel, I have the same result, which is that multitudes of people come to Christ. And it's a brave person that just says, you know, we're going to do this. Verse 17 of Romans 1 says, for in the gospel, there are words that produce faith in those who hear it. So if you remove the words, no one's going to have faith to believe in the gospel. 
river of life, new elders coming into this church, whatever happens, guard this gospel. It's been passed on to you for generations. There are people throughout this world who gave up their lives, were burnt at the stake, so that we would be here today in Narari still believing the gospel. It didn't change. It didn't get compromised. We're still here today. And if you are saved, that is an amazing miracle because salvation has come to you through the proclamation of the gospel. Number two, guard the things of the Spirit. Did you notice in verse 6, for this I remind you, Timothy, to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. This impartation, verse 14, we read it, the last verse. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within you, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. We need to say to you, new future elders, guard the things of the Spirit. Don't compromise with the things of the Holy Spirit. Be men who are filled with the Holy Spirit and talk about the Holy Spirit all the time and give space for the Holy Spirit to move in our congregations, in our small groups, every aspect of our life as a church. The Apostle Paul said to the Galatian church, you foolish Galatians. Do you know, one day I'd really love to say something like that to my congregation at home. (laughs) I'm always jealous whenever I read that. You know, I'd love to say, you foolish people in London. (laughs) I mean, it's quite harsh, isn't it? It's, It's kind of like, wake up, you foolish Galatians. The context is this, of saying you foolish. You began in the spirit. Did you think that through somehow human effort, you would fulfill the purposes of God? Get back! You began in the Spirit, you need the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit you will need at the end. We don't need as river of life less of the Spirit right now. Dial it down a little bit, not too sure about some things. Listen, everything we believe about the Spirit is based on the Word of God. So it's not flaky and weird, it's based, you've got to find it in the Word of God. And if it's in the Word of God about the Holy Spirit, then let's embrace it with all our hearts. We don't need less of the Spirit as the years go by. We need more of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do the things God's called us without the Holy Spirit. We cannot function without the Holy Spirit. Here's the truth. If the Holy Spirit left the planet tomorrow, there are a load of churches I know in the UK that would meet next Sunday and they would not notice the difference. (laughs) If the Holy Spirit was to leave the planet, please don't misquote me on Twitter and everything. Dave Holden said the Holy Spirit has left the planet. I'm just using it as an example. (laughs) Folks, he's not. Turn to the person next to you and say, the Holy Spirit's not leaving the planet. I just want you to get that. He's not leaving the planet. Okay. If, if the Holy Spirit was to leave, what about River of Life? I would think and hope and pray we just could not exist. You know, there's no point singing songs. Anyone can do that. But worship is in spirit and in truth. So no Holy Spirit, we're not going to be able to worship. There's a thousand things we won't be able to do without the person of the Holy Spirit. Future elders of River of Life, pray for people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Pray for people to keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. Pray for people to be flooded with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Pray for people to move in the gifts and power of the Holy Spirit to be witnesses, even to move in signs and wonders that we read in the book of Acts. He's the same Holy Spirit today as he was back in those days when we read those accounts. I often wonder why is the book of Acts in the Bible if it's there just to frustrate me it's just full of all these amazing miracles why am I reading this when it can't happen today and just as Scott reminded just as there are apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers etc etc today the power of the Holy Spirit is just the same number three 
future elders guard the values of river of life. There are people in this church that have got hold of values that are precious and powerful and have been fought over and mean so much. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15. Paul talking about Timothy, the very person he's writing this letter to, says to the Corinthians, for you, for through, for though you have countless guards, guides in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then, be imitators of me, and that is why I sent you, Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach them everywhere in every church. There are ways, values, examples, patterns of behavior that the elders of this church have exemplified over many years. To the new elders of this church, take these same values, take these same ways of living, not just the doctrine, but a way, Paul says, my ways in Christ. The things you've heard, the things you've seen. I was privileged to be on Thursday night with all the elders of the church, including the new guys coming in. It was just so moving as the new guys were asked to speak and said, one of the things that I'm rejoicing coming over because I've seen in you for years how you've treated your wife, how you've been with your kids how you've done life, how you've done work, what you are as a person. And I want to follow that wonderful example. Folks, we live in a different culture. There's different battles to fight than there were in the past. There are different ways to do things, but never compromise on the values. I had the privilege 10 years ago of handing over to a new generation back in our church, raising up a whole new generation. And I knew they'd do things differently. I knew they'd do things that I'd go, really? Really? And they would do things differently in worship and da 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 da, and especially in evangelism to reach a generation who don't know Jesus. But I also knew this they knew the values, and they were never going to compromise on any of them. In fact, to this day, 10 years later, some of them are more zealous about the values than I am. It's important that we understand this. You might like to remember this verse, and it's so poignant, not verse, this saying, it's so poignant to River of Life. Honour the past generation and invest in the future generation. And if you can get that right as new elders, honouring the past but investing in the future, you'll do great. Fourth and finally, just guard relationships. River of Life eldership team that I've been privileged to walk with for many years are friends, they love one another, they're in great relationship with one another, they know one another's families, they really do love one another. And you see it there in in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 2, to Timothy, my beloved child. Look what he says, I thank God with whom I serve as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. I remember you, your tears. I long to see you, that I might be filled with joy. This is not the CEO of an organization talking to a director. This is a father speaking to a son. The vocabulary of the New Testament is all relational. And so for you new elders, I, I really want to commission you. Don't drop relationships. Don't drop friendship. Don't walk away from the fact that at the very heart of Scripture we see relationships up front and central. Amen. Amen. We commission you guys in a few moments. And as we do so, we're going to be praying for you to guard these precious things. Amen. Going to hand back to Scott. One of the extraordinary things about this moment I've found is there's part of me that doesn't want it to happen. And uh, it's a funny thing how 
<clears throat> we have built-in inertia. We know what we're used to, and <laughs> the younger guys are quite happy for the older guys to carry on. The older guys are quite happy to carry on. Let's just leave it as it is. And it feels so counterintuitive. But um, hearing scripture read, as we've just had now, and preached, guard these things, guard the gospel, guard the deposits of the spirit in you, guard the values, guard relationships. You just think we have so much to share with the world. I'd like to ask in a moment uh, the elders who are stepping up and off to come up with as many of their family as they have and to line up here, please. And simultaneously, those who are stepping up and on to come with as many of their family as they have and line up here. And as they come up, we can give them a round of applause and we will have other opportunities for applause later on. If those guys could please come up quickly. This is Stewie down here. One down, Stu. On the, yeah, that's it. I'll be in the middle here. Yeah, that's fine. Good. Good, and then the new guys behind. Good. 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 Come a bit closer. If you guys can be in line with the speakers here, yeah, that'll be great. Right. Um, sorry, let me just come through here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've asked the new guys to be at the back because they're taller, generally. The average age of the church is dropping, but the average height is increasing. And it's one of the signs that I've got to get out of the way pretty soon. Uh, but just before we speak specifically about some of the people who are standing here, I would like to mention that the theme for us as a church this year is Church Reformation for Society Transformation. And that when we are a people who make disciples of others, we are really living a reformational New Testament kind of life. It's the life Jesus called us to live. If we're going to see change in society, we need to see change in the church. As DNA, we say that our vision is real life in Christ, real change in the world. We don't expect to see any change in the world unless we see the church radically different. And I just want to highlight a couple of radical differences in what we're experiencing today. And I believe this is something of the reformational expression that church needs to be. First of all, diversity. You will see a diversity of age, a diversity of background, a diversity of language, where we all say what we have in common, what joins us together is Jesus. I don't know if you're looking for a way to be qualified to live in Zimbabwe. If you're a real Zimbabwean, and, and real Zimbabweans maybe think they come from Mount Darwin, or real Zimbabweans are of the totem Morfu, <laughs> Kanashumba. And you might differentiate between Zimbabweans according to different things. And we try to cancel out people on the color of their skin or whether they click. And the reality is these differences outside of Christ will always be used to marginalize one another to consolidate the position of power of one. And it doesn't matter if his skin color is gray, green, yellow, white, or the best, dark brown. <laughs> doesn't matter what the color of skin is, it's the same fallen man. And honestly, in the church, if we can demonstrate love, that cuts across every human boundary, that treats older men as fathers, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters, with absolute purity. 
that celebrates our diversity, delights in a difference of language, is willing to take responsibility when we've gone wrong and shine the difference in Christ. This is some what we have seen and I believe are going to see even more. Secondly, what we see is older people handing over to younger people. Do I need to say more? And some are very old, some are medium old, but they are people who are intentionally giving space to the next generation. And the average age is moving from around 54 to around 44, 45. And the 44, 45 average guys are going to be immediately looking for how can we get to 41, 39? How can we get the average age down there? The passage that Dave read today where the apostle Paul called Timothy, the commentators will say he was around 16 years old. By the time he's writing to him years later, Timothy has laid hands on multiple eldership teams through his 20s. And now at about 28, he is saying to him, Timothy, I charge you in the presence of God, God, the doctrine which has been given to you. 28. The disciples, even younger, who Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. We, we give our children a false false concept that when they get beyond 25, they're suddenly going to become mature. We should be saying to them at 15, it's your, it's your issue. Lead your cell group at school. Lead your Bible study at school. Give talks on Horizon Camp. Get involved in youth. Be ready to preach. Men and women, we need to be raising our kids at 18. They can have babies. They can cause car crashes. They can go to war. They need to lead in church. Yes. And instead of having babies and causing car crashes and going to war, they should be building up the body of Christ, shining as stars in the universe. And there's so much for us to do in our 30s, 40s, 50s. I love that word from Moreland. By the way, thank you to everyone who contributed. Can we just give a round of applause to the worship team, those who brought words up at the front? I'm so grateful for the participation. I'm so thankful for the staff, for the energy that they've done in putting this together. I'm so grateful for your energy today. We all have a part in this. We are all stepping up. The last thing I want to point out about what's happening today that you don't miss is the peace and the joy. And how often we do see transition from older to younger but it is wrestling the mic out of the hand. Asante sana. <laughs> I mean, talk about it. Like, it's just, it's just over. How like, oh, he just pushes. Do you remember? Boom. I, <laughs> Asante sana. I go back and I watch those clips of, of Mugabe. I'm like, oh, this guy. He held, held, held. He did not want to go. <laughs> and it's everywhere. Football clubs, WhatsApp groups. No one likes to leave a WhatsApp group. <laughs> this morning, I, I was about to write a message on a WhatsApp group, and I thought, if I write this message, I know this guy. He hates WhatsApp groups, and he'll immediately say, so-and-so has left the group. So I thought, I'm going to just take him off first. So took him off, and I sent the message. Then he writes to me directly, you took me off the group. <laughs> no one wants to let go. Sure. And what we have experienced is joy in the Spirit. I haven't asked people to step down. I said, let's pray, let's seek God. We were an eldership team of 12, and just before COVID, Terry and Wendy Virgo were with us, and we prayed as a team. And at that moment, we felt led that Abe Gutsy should step down as an elder and step up into responsibility in Chiweshe. And he's blazed the trail. And we had the joy of Terry praying on that occasion. And then COVID hit and we've been aware we wanted to include a, a wider, younger generation, diversity. 
And as we've gone along, we haven't known how it's going to work. And we just prayed, and different people said, I think this, I think that. The one that we didn't get quite right was Jacob, who said, Jacob says, I think I should come off. And everyone said, no, Jacob has to stay. <laughs> so for now, Jacob's there. Jacob's there. What are you doing there, Jacob? <laughs> you, you're not supposed to be there. <laughs> Jacob is trying to step off. But he's involved in so many lives and he's so influential. It was like, no, no, don't. Derek can go. Scott can go. Stu, yeah. Roy, yeah. But Jacob, no. And we'll, we know that he's going to carry on for another nine months at least. And I think he will. I think he will step off. I think in nine months we'll have up and off again. And we'll pray for him today just because he's <laughs> in transition. But this is, this is it. It's just a joy. People are eager to hand over. I think that is good parenting. When we want to see our children interdependent, able to fly on their own and of their own free will relating back to us. And do you know, the more we do that, the more exciting our participation becomes, the more they want to ask our advice and learn. So guys, the moment of transition, uh, I just want to appreciate each one of the elders here who have served so faithfully over the years. Derek and Margaret, who have been amazing friends, I just want to thank you for your friendship. I want to thank you for your faithfulness for the joy of being part of your son's lives and in many ways your leadership role doesn't change in the local church and Derek and Margaret go on now into a disciple nations role that is looking to see what they've brought in river of life into DNA churches in this nation and in other nations network course marriage course parenting course and they have so much treasure just sitting with leadership teams, and it's going to be exciting to see where that goes. Scott and Dustine, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your love towards the church. Thank you for your fire and Holy Spirit zeal that you bring. Thank you for the example of your children. Scott and Dustine continue as normal in the church, continuing to bring prophetic input but serving wider and linking directly with Hope City in Bulawayo. And I saw Flora Chisana here. I don't know if Taps is here, but they're from Hope City and are transitioning to Harare at the moment. And there's just such a dynamic connection to there. That church is needing to find a new venue because space is a problem. Scott, uh, uh, Stu and Terry, thank you so much for your friendship. Thank you for your love. Thank you for how you've so faithfully served River of Life in finances. And uh, I gave suggestions to the individuals who said that they were stepping up and off where they should connect. And they were all in agreement. Stew's was a place called Kitwe. I said, I said Kitwe would be a good place. Does anyone know where Kitwe is? So Stu said, um, is that a suburb next to Mount Pleasant? <laughs> because if it is, I'm up for it. I said, no, it's somewhere close to the copper belt. He said, um, let me speak to Terry. I'll come back to you. And they have connected with Andrew Ellis at the Christian Counseling Center. And Andrew, as you know, has done a transition with Ian and A.D. Wilshire, leading the counseling center with Leanne Johnson and uh, Stu and Terry coming alongside them as a couple. And I'm hoping that the counseling center is going to bring incredible blessing, multiplied blessing going forward. Roy Chim, thank you so much for your friendship. Thank you for your faithfulness, your perseverance, your example. Thank you for how you've loved your family. And thank you for your faithfulness and finances. 
Roy goes on to head up our finances going forward. We've moved from 30, 35, 39,000 a month to 44, 45,000 a month to 50, I hope 55,000 a month, and I hope we're going to get to 65, 75,000 a month. And Roy is right at the helm of that and leading a team with Simba Goto, with Lloyd Mlochwa, with Calvin Chamunorwa, and some of the old dogs will probably be drawn on for some input into that. Thank you so much, Roy. Gus and Michelle, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your love for this church and for how you have handled the transition into one church, two sites, and then overseen multi-meetings in those sites. Thank you that you're here stepping up and off with a son stepping up and on. And uh, Gus has just lost his father in the last weeks and jetted back in yesterday to be here. And he said, I, I didn't want to miss through the tears and all. I wanted to be here to willingly hand on, and see my son willingly step up. What a moment. <clears throat> Gus is connecting with the base church in Bulawayo, a very lively church connected with so much, and I think he and Michelle are so perfectly suited to that with a huge education bias as well. Jacob, you're not really going anywhere. <laughs> Thank you for your love, for me, for my family, for the church, for the lost, for the world. Thank you for the example that you and Terumi are, and for your beautiful children. We celebrate you. We love you so much. Jacob is involved in too many things for me to name, but one of them is connecting with um, a new creation in Bulawayo and their link with a church plant in Kigali, Rwanda. And I think Mpi and Debele might be there at the moment. There's a core team uh, starting in a house, in a home, and Jacob is keeping uh, a link to them as well. So guys, I would like to pray a prayer of sending and commissioning. And then as I say, amen, I would love you just to give them a round of applause. And uh, when you guys have had enough of the applause, you can, you can take a seat. Father, thank you so much that we can celebrate all these amazing characteristics of this transition, of the diversity that is represented, of the willingness of heart of older generation handing over to younger, and the context of joy and peace. Thank you for the faithfulness with which every one of these families has outworked their responsibility. Thank you so much for the blazing example of the children raised in these homes. Lord, we thank you for the blessing that they have been, the blessing that they continue to be in our church, and the blessing that they will be to churches and situations far beyond. We send them, we commission them into all that the Father has for them going forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much, guys. You can take your seats. It's going to be funny waking up on Friday morning and uh, we meet as elders 5.55 to about 7 on a Friday and uh, having a composition different in the room. It's going to be funny for those who've done that for years and years, some 20, 25 years, to have Friday morning uh, free. Uh, I think it means you must make coffee for someone. A uh, little hint. Uh, 
I am massively excited for what this means. Uh, although there is some pain in transition, I'm massively excited for what it means for DNA. I am massively excited for what it means for River of Life. I'm very excited about those elders that stay on, Barry Rawlings, Jacob and Gandu, <laughs> Andrew Ellis, Musmara Mwidze, Dave Hobbs, Scott Marks. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. And I'm looking forward to a transition there as well. But we are joined by this team. And it's going to be a whole different team. It's going to be a whole different dynamic. And it has been a joy to grow in closeness of relationship with these guys. And probably my deepest joy, I don't know if you heard about AJ Pupajena. Do you know Barbara and Simba's little girl, AJ? She saw me preaching, God of all things, gardens. Did you see it online, gardens? And I'm in my garden, I'm preaching. And halfway through, AJ goes, why is he not sweating? <laughs> it's like, no, no, he must be sweating. What's, what's the problem? So I've tried not to sweat today, but I think it's going to come out. <laughs> the, um, one of the most exciting parts of this transition, I hadn't really seen coming, but I was praying through the text in 1 Timothy about qualifications for elders, and it says must be well thought of by outsiders. And so I found people that these people know, either that they work with or they engage with beyond workplace, maybe in other clubs, other things that they're involved. And the, the joy of hearing unbelievers say things that they think is going to help me to make sure they are appointed. But one guy says, I just want you to know that there could be no one better for your hierarchy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy you need. His manners. His manners. I like, wonder, does he say please? Does he just like, what is it about? Every single one of these just so affirmed. I knew this guy when he used to be high. I knew this guy when he was born. I knew this guy when he, when he fudged deals. I knew him 15 years ago. I knew him when he was born. I knew him when he gave his life to Christ when he was eight. I know this person. I recommend him wholeheartedly. So first of all, Leon... Uh, Leon married to Charlie, their beautiful children, Ella and Levi. I, I, I mean, it's just what a joy. Uh, Leon is a man who cares deeply for children. He has taken on the role of junior school teacher, and there's not many of them. He loves to be connected with children. And I long to see eldership teams across DNA as a whole, where we have men and women leading the youngest, three-year-olds, etc. Danny Hillman, who, Danny, who's coming next, uh, said, when I came and joined River of Life Church, at first I was visiting, and after the first meeting I said, I'm staying. Because there was a child crying, and at that time, I was obviously better behaved. Now, what I normally say if there's a child crying is, children get stressed when they're too hot. Outside, it's cooler. <laughs> help them. Help them. But apparently on that day, I took the child in my arms and I preached the sermon from there. And, and Danny and Sherry went out after the meeting and met Claire, who was with rockets. And, and, and they said, wow, the pastor's wife is with the youngest children in the church. And so Danny and Sherry share such a same heart. They are tender. They are loving people. I, I'm just so excited with what this means for the eldership team as a whole as they bring this richness to us. And Jaden and Skye, their beautiful children, are such an example. Danny Hully, only a few years older than Jaden, is... <laughs> in in a few years' time, Jaden's, Jaden's only got a little bit to catch up. I tell you, I am so blessed by Danny Hully. This is a young man 
who has genuine faith in God. He shares the gospel with his friends one-on-one, leads so many to Christ, and then holds a life group in his home. And, and he didn't want to come to the meeting on Thursday night, which was the eldership, previous elders and new elders talking together. He said, Scott, I can't come because I've got my home group going on. I'm like, Danny, there comes a time <laughs> where as you take on these responsibilities, you're going to need to balance these and you're going to have to balance your responsibilities at school, your responsibilities in your home group and your responsibilities in elder. I'm going to give you one day to try and sort it out. And he came back and he said, I've sorted it out. We've got away. I'm going to be there. And I tell you, having Danny in the room is a whole different dynamic. It's a whole new day. I lead a a task team for New Frontiers Global, and it's a next generation task team. And all the guys are in their 30s. And we're talking about communication and relationship across sphere. And these guys, 34, 35, are saying, we're too old. We don't know how to connect with the 20s and the teens. We need to get 20s into this room now, because New Frontiers needs this now. Danny, I applaud you for having the guts to step up. So many in your generation want to wire wire and let the older guys carry on. Let them carry on. Why are you looking at me? And you're putting up your hand and you're saying, I'm part of it. What a blessing. (laughs) Calvin Chamonorwa. Calvin is a special friend who uh, was working in the UK for some time as an actuary, and when I heard that he was coming back to Zimbabwe, I was so excited, and the fact that he was in a church led by Steve Tibbet, I thought maybe he might find his way to River of Life. I hoped. And he got involved, and he started coming along with us, and, and as I got to know him, but I thought it would be amazing to hear him preach. I will never forget the first time he preached. I will never forget what he said. He spoke with such vulnerability about what it is to feel out, not to have friends, not to be loved, the deep desire we have to be connected. And I heard his vulnerability at the first moment he was given to step up, and I thought that is the DNA of River of Life. We want to be authentic. We want to be down to earth. You can be an actuary. You can be... Uh, a, a rocket scientist but we've all got the same problem of sin and we've all got the same solution in Christ we are all one born of Adam and given the opportunity to be born again in Christ and we each bring to that the gifts and talents that God has brought to us to steward for his glory and this marriage Ruvi is a phenomenal wife. They're an incredible couple. Claire and I have had the joy of drawing alongside closely with them. We absolutely love them. I, I'm so looking forward to the dynamic within our team. And I see today that Mikhail is here, and I'm thinking he's supposed to do timekeeping. He's supposed to be timekeeping for his sister. Am I right? So, so at the moment, the Chamonoros have some children doing national rowing competitions, some children supporting other children. I don't know how they've juggled their responsibilities to be here, but they've said we want to be here, and I think Mikhail wanted to be here as well. Thank you so much. You guys are a blessing. <laughs> blessing Wazara, I don't think needs much hype. Uh, Blessing is a true blessing to us, and uh, he is a man of integrity, uh, a man who has been given more reference from outside the church than inside the church. People that he works with in high places, not only within Zimbabwe, but internationally, just say you've got absolutely the right man. He is a man who has known such hurt in his own life growing up. 
he has had every cause for racial prejudice and he has not swept it under the carpet but has pushed into Christ and received grace from God in his time of need. He is a man who I have watched change in his marriage. Am I right, Blessing? <laughs> I would say Blessing was more Zimbabwean than the average Zimbabwean male. <laughs> and I've watched him so tender with his children, so tender with his wife, so transparent with us on team and the way that he's loved Josie. And the scripture says, if a man is able to love his own family and care for his own household, he's able to lead the church. This is the kind of man that this is. Zimbabwe needs men like this. Sarah, Missy, Ben, you are treasures to us as you are to your parents. Kumbi is just amazing. Absolute wild card. Kumbi is the kind of guy that you measure once, you measure twice, you measure three times, and then you measure a few more times again and just check. This is a person who I have watched humility work out in his life. I have watched him be real about his background, much the same as every single man standing before you and certainly unity. That is something that you get with this leadership, not a perfection, not a fudging over of who I was before Christ and not a fudging over even of who I am today as if I am perfect before you. Fortunately, the Bible does not call elders to be perfect, but calls them to be an example. And Kumbi is an outstanding example, not only of one who has walked out of addiction, but one who gives all his heart to seeing others come out of addiction. As I got references from people in his workplace and his friendship circle, they've told me stories of school fees that he pays for children, of things that he's doing on the side, of groups that he's running. He's into schools. He is going to keep us on the cutting edge. I hope that he's going to be just like Peter. Rough. Not polished like unity. <laughs> but wild. Mandevu, in places, not neat, all around, wild. And I've watched Kumbi among us weep tears and say, I've been fathered, I've been loved. I won't tell you the specific relationships and examples, but I think it's just the beginning. And we need people like Kumbi. And there's so many sitting here today, not only in eldership, but across river of life to reach people in brokenness, in pain. We want to be relevant to prostitutes. We want to be relevant to those in gambling. We want to be relevant to those caught up in pornography, in sex addiction. We want to be relevant to those in uh, substance abuse of every kind. We want to be relevant. We want to be able to share our stories. Kumbi, it's such a joy to be on team with you. Thank you for all the diversity and the beauty that you bring to us. <laughs> Unity has been a very special person, a journey that we've walked along for years. And from the very first time I met him, he had a zeal for God's power to change his life. And I've watched that zeal convert over two years, three years, into a zeal that his wife even began to believe. Maybe God's power is even enough for unity. <laughs> and then I've watched unity go faithfully for years, faithfully for years. And I've watched a woman step up alongside this man a rock-solid union. 
This marriage, I think, is about to bring phenomenal blessing to this church and beyond this church. Unity, it's such a joy to see you with your own children, Tabo and Tadala. Is Tadala leading in the rock? She's at the rock. She's probably leading the class. <laughs> Unity last night was quoting passages from a book we read together in Gotham, which was a study about God in the workplace about 10 years ago. Not only did I not read the book and do my homework, but I would never have remembered it. He's got it. And I think he's going to bring a lot to our teaching and preaching as well as to our children's work and every other area. Can we give them one more round of applause? <laughs> Guys, um, could I ask the, those who are still serving as elders and any of their families, those who have stepped up and off, and any of their families, please to come up and um, just stand behind them. We're going to lay hands, and then Dave and I will lay hands from the front on each one. Those elders who have served, those elders who are currently serving, and any of their family, please come forward. Could you guys come forward? They will stand behind you, and we will just go along the back. We'll just go along, yes. Come on and praise him. Get up and make some noise. Everybody in here. Nice to have extra music. Um, could I ask you guys to stand with us? And um, you can pace yourself. But um, what I'd love us to do is as these guys lay hands on this team from behind, I would love you to stretch your hands forward as a sign of saying, we stand together. We look to you, Lord, for your strength and your grace on these as they lead. Can I just add as well that I yes. think sometimes when we have moments like this, God speaks to people in the congregation about certain individuals. So if you feel God gives you a word uh, you're not going to be able to get it in today, obviously, because of time restraints. But please, please uh, make a note of it and share it with somebody uh, on the eldership team. So we don't want to miss out on some of the things that God wants to say to these guys as individuals. Excellent. Please, would you do that? As we're praying here from the Lord and send that word to anyone on the eldership team and probably our first Friday meeting, we will collate those and have a look at them. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for unity. We thank you for your provision. And we lay hands on him as an elder of River of Life Church. Pray for his marriage. We pray for his children. We pray for your blessing on his home and on all his area of responsibility. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we commission you to be a shepherd amongst these people. Unity, you will provide unity mm -hmm. at every level, every part of this church community. We set you apart with the authority that God gives to those who are his under shepherds and that you will have much wisdom and grace and power. This is not you. This is what God gives to you and through you. And all God's people said, Oh, Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Kumbi. We thank you that you are able to work all things together for good and for your glory, for those who are called by you. We thank you for your grace upon Kumbi and appoint him as an elder of River of Life Church to serve selflessly with selfless faith, to reach and win to you a generation. We pray for your blessing on him, on every relationship, every circle of influence in Jesus' name. Kumbi, I believe the Lord would say to you, never disqualify yourself from what God has qualified you to do. You're a trophy of grace. Your story is remarkable. 
from one place to a complete transformation to another. And through you, you will win many to follow me, says God. Lord, I pray for this evangelistic gift. Yes. To multiply and grow as he comes into eldership. Yes. And that through him, many will come to know you. And Lord, may he pastor many in this church. Yes. May he rub off onto them what you've given to him so that many likewise might go and share the good news of Jesus with their generation. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Father, thank you for blessing. Thank you for all that you have placed in his life to bless this nation and nations beyond us. Thank you for who he is in his home. Thank you for who he is in his workplace, in this church, and far broader. We thank you for the provision of God, of this man, for our church, and of Josie and this marriage, these beautiful children. We lay hands on blessing and appoint him as an elder of River of Life Church to shepherd, to oversee, to guard all that you have entrusted. Pray for your fanning into flame of this gift yes. of leadership yes. in Jesus. Amen. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The Holy Spirit is coming upon you right now at this moment with fresh anointing mm -hmm. so that you know it is not you, but it's him. Be filled. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Mighty acts, mighty signs, giving glory to God, pointing to Jesus. Lord, I pray for a fresh, mm -hmm. fresh oil right now in Jesus' name. Shepherd these people under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Teach these people under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Always know Amen. in the depths of your heart, I need the Holy Spirit for all that God has called me to do. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for Calvin, for the joy that he is among us, for the uh, breadth of foresight and vision that you've given him. Thank you for the gift of faith that you've given him. Thank you for his marriage and his family. Thank you for the outshining of your wisdom that we see in his life. And we lay hands on him in the name of Jesus and appoint him as an elder of River of Life Church to shepherd to guard, to guide, to govern for the glory of Jesus, the advance of the kingdom of God, in Jesus' name. You've known the calling of your Lord for many years, and today is a step forward in that calling upon your life, something coming to fruition, but this is not the end of that calling. This is just a step into all that God has called you to do in the days. And I just sense there's so much more that God has called you to do. I feel the Lord wants to encourage you. Don't step back. Don't hide away. Just as God has called you to this point, he will call you to so many other things that lie ahead of all that you are going to rise up and see happen in your life. So again, we let your authority come, Lord, in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let your authority come. Father, we thank you for Danny. Thank you for the joy of working with his zeal, his energy, his maturity in you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for his courage. We lay hands on him and appoint him as an elder of River of Life Church to shepherd, to pastor, to oversee, to guard in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. 
I ended up in a, a Zoom call with you during COVID, probably a couple of years ago. And we were in a breakout room and you were sitting there and immediately that we we're in, I don't, there's four or five of us on the, on the breakout, breakout group. I just immediately knew as we spoke that there was something of God's hand upon your life. Yeah. I'm so grateful I'm not on a Zoom call with you this morning. <laughs> yes. But really here in person, and the great joy of laying hands on you for all that God has invested in you for many years. I just feel God wants to say you're not an elder in training. Yes. You're not a junior elder. Yes. But you step into the gift of yes. eldership right now. Don't hold back. Don't be quiet. Yes. Honor your elders. Yes. Uh, give them space. But at the same time, with the passion that God has put within you, for God wants to encourage you, don't hold back. Speak. There's an integrity about you beyond your years. God wants to yes. have your voice heard loud and clear right now from today. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Your arms might be a bit tired if you need to take a break. Just, uh, I think we've just got two more to go. Hey? Father, thank you for Danny. Thank you for Sherry, for this beautiful family, for Jaden and Sky. We thank you for your hand of blessing on them as a home. And thank you for the zeal that Danny carries to see your word taught with integrity, to see your word handled correctly, proclaimed in truth, and for how he lives this in his own life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we appoint you, Danny, as an elder of River of Life Church to guard the gospel, guard the deposit in you and the things of the Spirit in this church, to guard the ways in Christ that we know from Scripture, to guard relationships, to see relationships multiply across this church, yes. that marriages would be healed, that singleness would be celebrated in celibacy, and marriage celebrated in exclusivity, the marriage bed held in honor, Lord, that river of life would shine completely differently in how we relate to one another. We pray for your blessing on this man in Jesus' name. Amen. There's just something really bright about you. Mm -hmm. When people are with you, they feel the joy of the Lord mm -hmm. welling up and affecting them. There's something about you as a couple. Mm -hmm. There's something about you as a man that's infectious with joy and hope and fun, not shallow fun but genuine fun in god and exactly. his purposes just meeting you last night we were chatting and you were wearing an arsenal shirt yes. and i said i can't lay hands on someone with an arsenal shirt <laughs> <laughs> you promised that you wouldn't wear it and you also said you just like red that's why you were wearing yeah, it yeah yeah and we just laughed together and i just immediately felt that wonderful sense of infectious life it's it's not just a flippant thing it's life and you are going to bring life through your family it's going to be imparted you know the word of god says that the law kills but the spirit gives life so i pray for danny for more of your spirit giving life to all that he touches in this church and beyond in jesus name amen amen Lord, we praise you for Leon. We thank you for his amazing care for people, for the delight that he has in his marriage, for the specialness of who Charlie is to him and who they are as a couple, for the exceptional gifting that they have as a couple together. We thank you for their beautiful children and pray for your blessing on Leon. We lay hands on him in the name of Jesus Amen. and appoint him as an elder of River of Life Church to be an example to the flock, to show what it is to be above reproach, husband of but one wife, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, hospitable, able to manage his own home. Lord, we pray for your hand upon him 
that his leadership gift would fan into flame and go from strength to strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was just about to say the very same phrase that Scott used, this leadership gift. I just see leadership gift all over you. It's, it's remarkable. I'm just seeing it in the Holy Spirit. This amazing gift that God has given you to lead, to be a leader. All elders are leaders, mm -hmm. but there's sometimes a gifting on some that just takes it to another level. And I feel God wants to encourage you. It's God-given. It's not something that you've made up or even fought for. In fact, there's even been reluctancy at times. But each time you move into life or church, there's this sense, this tug of this leadership gift within you. And we cover that for River of Life. We cover that gift through he and Charlie that there might be an amazing prophetic leadership gift that would affect every aspect of the life of this church. So again, we pray in Jesus' name, set him apart to be an elder in this flock from today on with the authority that God has given. Love these people, care for these people, teach these people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for your faith bound together. That was amazing. I didn't know exactly how it was going to work, and it was incredible to sense the unity together. We're pretty much there. I'd just like to do one other thing. Could I ask just the eldership team to stand up at the front? Everyone else can go and sit down. And uh, could I ask Roy Chim to come up and pray for us as elders? Is Roy Chim still in the house? I hadn't got hold of him beforehand, but I just wonder, Roy, are you there? I'd just love you to pray for us as an eldership team. Would you mind? <clears throat> Guys, um, can we just, as an eldership team, can you stand down here? And then I'll stand up on this step, otherwise I'm too short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Roy, I'd love you to pray for us. Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name. We see how you took 12 men who were scared and with no courage and you made them change the world. You gave them boldness. I pray for these men in front of us that they may have the same boldness, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to make disciples of all nations, starting from Eastley, from Greystone Park, within disciple nations to go into the world and preach the word. I pray for men who will stand up with integrity, who will steward their homes, their children, and the flock of this church through the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that you may empower them and that you may give them ability beyond their own capability through the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that they would continue to burn in their hearts, to have this flame in their hearts, a passion to see the gospel preached, to see this, the lost saved, to see the, the one sheep who is lost and leave the 99 as you did, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the reckless abandonment of love that is cherished amongst us, Lord a reckless love like your son showed us that goes for the weak, the lost, the despised and calls them home. I pray, Lord, for a courage that brings love above all else, that brings love wherever they go, in whatever capacity they serve. And I pray, Lord, for a church that would look to, this, to these men and see men of courage, men of valor, like David's mighty men, men who would go where others would fear to tread, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, that they would declare that the Lord is with us, and where the Lord is, we will go. I also pray for a church, Father, that will change and transform this nation, that, Father, we would be a church that's alive, in the mission field, not just on a Sunday, but in every single way, in every aspect of our lives. I pray, Lord, for 
preaching which is inspired by the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that they may lead, guide, govern this church, that their, their leadership would be a testimony for many to see. And I pray, Lord, that this transition that we have seen and the diversity that we see in front of us is a testimony to the nation and to the nations. I pray for disciple nations that, Father, we would be a sphere that would change this nation in a way that was never thought possible. I pray for Scott as lead elder, as he has led, led us for more than 25 years with such dedication, with such diligence. I pray, Lord, that he may run his race and he may win the prize that he so much looks forward to. I pray, Lord, that we would look heavenward and the things of the earth would grow strangely dim. And I pray, Lord, above all else, that you would protect these men, you would protect them from the schemes of the enemy, and that, Father, that we who are looking to them would be people who would encourage them and people who would pray for them, even in our quiet times, that we would hold them up in prayer, hold up their families, their marriages, their children in prayer, I pray, Lord, for a church that is ablaze and a church that's going after you like no one has ever done. And I pray, Lord, for this moment, this holy moment that we're in, that, Father, that our hearts may just be open to you in every way. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Super. Thank you, guys. Great, you can take a seat. Thank you so much. And uh, I think this has been my favorite River of Life service ever. <laughs> you have just been so amazing in the unity in the spirit and the bond of peace. Thank you so much to those in the overflow. It's just felt like you're connected, but I know it's difficult out there. Uh, we wanted not to be at Gateway if we could avoid it because it was difficult with the sound and all the rest. So we tried to be in our own venue this time. I do believe the time is now for us to sail. I believe this is a, a huge battleship and there's an engagement of a people, a thousand, two thousand people, heart and soul aligned, contributing in their own ways. Uh, this is a very exciting, exciting moment. Dave and Liz, thank you for serving us so superbly well. Thank you for your love, your example.